Hello there, and welcome to round five, round eight, sorry, Global Automo Formula Automobilista Season 3. I don't know why I said five. Where here we are at the Austrian Grand Prix at Spielberg. On pole, perhaps the driver who should have won the last round at Silverstone, Sterling Moss. Championship contenders, third in the championship, only two points off the championship lead. This is going to be a fascinating conclusion to the season with four rounds to go. Alexander Rossi is in second for Excelsior. Team that got a win in Germany, should have won in America and haven't really been anywhere since then. Hopefully this is round where it comes back to them. Sebastian Vettel is up to third in Harvey, the team that haven't been firing on as many cylinders as they have done in previous seasons, so hopefully this is a change for the better. Nick Heifeld, second in the championship, he's in fourth place on the grid, and a championship leader, Nika Hulkenberg. Linus Pavlovic is in sixth for Red Knight. Ahead of Phil Hill and the other Excelsior. Scott Dixon is 8th for City Park again, a team that's punching love their way to qualifying but uh, have had difficulties in the race. Ethan Center is 9th for Falcon, they had a dismal round last time out. Will this be better for the Falcon? Low down force might help them out down the straights on this track, which has got a lot of them. Lewis Hamilton is 10th for Cass, ahead of Mika Hacken and John Watson, making two care for ones on the same grid. It's Cavissa, 13th, ahead of Antonio Felix de Costa, probably underperforming in that DTK racing. Max Verstappen is 15th for NLE, ahead of Lando Norris in the chopper. Dan Gurney, 17th for Siggy Pop. Raguna Thun is in 18th. Jensen Button, nowhere near his teammate in 19th. Alan Prost, also nowhere near his teammate, running out the back of the grid again. We'll just let everybody line up. And we will soon be ready for the race. Here we go. One light, two lights, three, four, and the fifth light. And we are go. Decent start as they make their way off the line. Oh, that's the wrong way. Rossi's got the inside line there on Moss. He's going to take the line, but he's had to be tight on the brakes. Moss sweeps around the outside to keep the lead. Rossi keeps second though as Vettel sits in the slipstream. Half or at four, Hulkenberg fifth. Rossi there is that attacking or defending? I think he's actually attacking. Rossi turns the defence into an attack. He forces Moss onto the exit curve. Rossi takes the lead although Moss is in the slipstream. High has got past Vettel. But Moss is going to challenge back on the inside line. Moss has got the line, takes a bit of curb. Rossi's forced out wide. Has to slip back. Also, I think the center has made up a couple of places up into sixth place on the grid in the order. So we're all squabbling now to fall back down the order. Everyone's still going, everyone's still got their wings. That's what we're going to see. Button challenging Hacker up the inside line in the middle sector. That's a brilliant move there as Felix Costa has lost a couple of places. Alan Prost, absolutely star of star, up six places. That's a bad idea of a good thing. Pavlovich is falling back as Bissell tries to challenge around the outside of the bottom two corners and Bissell's up to 10th and there's contact with Pavlovich. Bit of contact, does not really held them up. Bing Stafford tries to he's boxed in by Pavlovich and Ragunathan's going to have to go up the inside into turn one. Nothing happening so far. To move back to the front, Moss has got the lead. Ross is thinking about a move. The tails have to fall back and now Hulkenberg's going to try and challenge him. Moss has got three tenths. Oh, Rossi. Getting down into turn four. For the second time. Hypho sitting there waiting for his low down force to help him down some of these straights. A bit of movement down the back. Keeps the cost from Watson having your eyes. It's Prost and Ragunathan. Eighteenth, nineteenth, and twentieth seem to fall a long way back. Hackman's had a dismal start. That's an absolute squabble here between Felix de Costa, Ragunas, and, and Watson. Felix has to sit behind Watson as they go through. It all strings out a bit in the final two corners. Dixon now on the back of Senna. Senna's had a great start, but Phil Hill has managed to get back past him. 
They're not really defending, but everyone else is lifting off to avoid going past for some reason as Hamilton just says, why are you doing that? I'm going to come sailing past. Top five not really moving as Moss though starting to pull away at the front. Senna tries to get up the inside of Phil Hill. Does get up the inside of Phil Hill. That low down force really helping. Not on the breaking point and Hill's now going to have the better car through this middle sector. Charging up and over the top. The final corner though. Your Cessna Arch, Danny Moss, sets a new fastest lap. And you expect for a race leader. A race leader who's putting a bit of a gap, 1.1 seconds now. He's already got a second over Rossi. A little bit of an unorthodox exit, I think is the best way to put that. Slowing down a tad. But Rossi is still firmly ahead. Hardcore trying to keep up as Hulkenberg is sat at the back of this pack. There's a big gap forming. The Senna and Hill are battling and holding each other up. Senna just doesn't have the pace here in the middle sector. And Hill can't get past down the straights. Visser and Pavlovich once again re reigniting their battle from a couple of laps ago. Visser takes back the place from Pavlovich and up into 10. It's the cost of down to 17th. That's a bit of a stinker from the fourth place driver in the championship, actually. I'm surprised to see he's falling away with so much. Hockenberg got a much better exit there than Vettel. Since it's his personal best lap. Uh, but Vettel was quicker that lap by four tenths. Surprising. Hulkenberg though has got slips through his Vettel's exit wasn't ideal, although Heidfeld's had to lift off his back with Rossi because he went the wrong side. Rossi defended oh so easily. Senna once again in trouble and Dixon actually challenging Phil Hill. Heidfeld thinking about a move on Rossi, pulls to the inside, there is contact. There's contact on him, Rossi is pushed wide. Rossi push one has to yield and sits behind Heidfeld now. So Heidfeld and Moss now up in first and second. Hulkenberg down in fifth. They're going to take the championship lead and Hulkenberg's going to fall a little bit behind if it stays like this. Rossi up in C will want to try and get back ahead in this pairing. You can see behind Senna is still not free at Phil Hill. His middle sector once again proving decisive. The Excelsior just catches up to Senna again and again. Rossi is not letting Heidfeld go, and in fact, he's got the pace and he wasn't falling away down that straight. He's in the situation, he's not going to get past yet, although we've seen from Hill that the Excelsior was. High down force is going to struggle to pass the lows because there isn't really a proper overtaking point in the middle sector for a dive bomb that you could expect from one of these um, more grippy cars. Hamilton, Chand and Dixon now, if they're just under drop this, of a staff and Prost have got out of Pavlovich, so he's down to 13. Alan Prost up 8 places from his grid spot, I was not expecting to see that, I must admit. Uh, this is a rejuvenated Prost. Mm -hmm. No, he's only really had one good race as Prost, and that was in Italy. Down at Monza when his low down force was just so OP. And even then it wasn't the most convincing, he was helped by Hamilton and Visser running into each other. So, a drive to 12 from the circuit that his car is probably not the best suited to is... You know, it's notable and it's worth praise. Heidfeld, now he's got past Rossi, isn't dropping Moss. And he's bringing it down to the uncomfortable... Yeah, it's uncomfortable. This is how close he is to Moss. There's six tenths in the breaking point. Rossi is really having to defend now from the tower. If he gets a good slipstream, 
The Telkaboom I think he would have moved past Rossi in turns 3 or 4. Hulkenberg is sat there probably just saving his tyres. And once the trait that got him victory last time out at Silverstone, will he use that again here to score another win? Nor anybody else have thought that that's a tactic that worked before. Let's try and get ourselves sorted. Lap 8, let's go a quick run down in the order. So Sterling Moss has got the lead, 1.6, so he's really pulled away from Hardford in the middle centre. He started first and he stayed first. Hardford has climbed two, he's now under pressure from Rossi. Actually, no, we'll stick with the. Uh, no, that's not changing. Rossi has lost a place into the. The Towns also lost a place, but Nick Halkenberg is where he was on the grid. Ethan Senna has climbed three, so good drawing from him. Bill Hill has sat behind Senna, hoping he can get past. That's a Scott Dixon back where he started. Hamilton's up one, and this was up three. Stack up 11, so so far there's a lot of puns here. Alan Frost up 8 from last on the grid is spectacular. Pavlovich has dropped from 6 from the grid down to 13, so an awful start from him. Ragunathan's up 4. Watson down 3, Felix De Costa down 2. Button up 2, Gurney down 1. Norris down 3, but the biggest loser is Mika Hacken, who's down 9 into last place. He had an awful first lap and a half. I just don't know how that happened, to be honest, son. We all missed it on the camera, isn't it? It's way too late for me to waste the time rewinding that bar back. Moss is going to do what he can to try and catch Heidfeld, but not down the straights as Moss seems to have broken the gap towards Heidfeld. Five is really now a second to fifth group with Moss pulling away. Um, and then we'll see who comes into the pits first, but it's worth noting the DTKs have really emphasised that they want time management sorted out. So, unless Zen goes over I or circumstances change, I'm really expecting them to two stop. Um, and nobody else really apart from Phil Hill is focused on you know, getting those tyres to survive a bit longer so expect similar numbers of people to three and two stop as we did last time with pretty much the same people coming in on the two stop and the same people having to do a three stop Phil Hill diving at centre into turn one he is close, this is the closer he's been for a while and centre's rattled here Hill is in the slipstream. Which way is he going to go? Is he going to think about a dive into turn three? He's not quite that stupid. As Dixon's going to let it happen. He, yes, Dixon would love to get past Hill, but he knows that he needs to get past Senna really if he wants to make it. And almost it's better to let Hill be the one who has the accident into Senna rather than himself into Hill and slow them all down. Hill needs to, Dixon needs to capitalise when Hill gets past Senna. That's really what the brain inside Dixon needs to be thinking. Capitalise, be smart. Long race, it's only lap 10 with 61 laps to go. It's only a short lap, you'll be fine. Hill though is right on the tail of Senna, he is absolutely flying. Look how close that is. Senna's only just edging away. If Hill can be a little bit braver on the brakes, but he can be sensible here. Get the exit. And attacks it. Oh no, but he's got that slide on the exit curve a bit more than Senna did. That's not going to be helpful. Frost has fallen behind Pavlovich, and Pavlovich has been really pulled away there. Now Hill's not making a move yet. Felix De Costa down to 16. He had looked there at Ragunathan, but Ragunathan's turned it into an attack on John Watson. Up the inside in turn four, Ragunathan gets past. Good move, but there's Bray, heavy braking, and Felix De Costa's hit the back of the chopper and lost his front wing. But Felix De Costa's going to be our first driver into the pits now. 
And this is what I was talking about in DTK. Nestling else went wrong. It's probably going to be a two stop, but this is going to be a three stop now. Um, I guess he's going to make those tyres last long enough to get to the end. From just one stop after this, it's too early for that. But I think it's the Costa dropping to last. Uh, at least he makes it into the pit lane. First drive to stop. Poor DTK racing. Norris now in the slipstream of Dan Gurney. Can he make the move? Into turn three, he's going to think about it. He's going to think about it. He lifts off the brakes and Norris up the inside. Going to give Gurney racing room on the exit. And Gurney's got the exit. He's got the line. He's pulling slightly ahead. Norris has the inside though into turn four. But now he pulls out of it, decides that locking up and sliding into the side of Gurney isn't going to be what the team needs. Even when you're at the back. It's a long race and a lot of stuff could happen. Squeaky bum time can ruin anybody's race. <laughs> this is Global Form Automobile List that you've got to remember. Hill's charge at centre seems to have faltered. A mistake or a not so good middle sector somewhere has made him fall away and now Dixon is close and it's just going to allow Senna to escape down the straights. It's not what he needs. And the three high downforce cars with Rossi, Mattel and Hulkenberg all kind of stuck here behind Heinfeld, but Rossi has fallen back from Heinfeld now. So I don't even know if that's, you know, genuine, although in terms of the race for these three, it's kind of been compromised by Heidfeld getting in front and being impossible to overtake. Without him there, they might have had a chance, but as it is, Sterling Moss, two and a half seconds, pulls away into the lead. Then it's the Costa who made his pit stop for a new front wing exit, pits in last, as you'd expect. It tells him to be careful here. It's Hulkenberg is right on his rear wing. You tell him to defend a bit into turn one takes a lot of curb. Hulkenberg pulls away, but he's in the slipstream. Only two tenths in it. I wouldn't put it past Hulkenberg. Bit of a lunge into turn four is certainly doable. Not the next up like that though, I think. Hulkenberg's chance is gone, it should win in turn 3. He's reading him in, he's reading him in, it's not going to be this lap. Getting a good exit here, getting into turn 6. Well, there's the good exit, not got. And there's turn 6, been and done, so the tail stays ahead of Hulkenberg, another lap. So then, scheduled pit stops, when do we think we're going to see him? If we're three stopping, we should be seeing our first stop as around about lap 17. So anybody who wants to come in, you know, anybody whose tyres are not looking too happy and is looking like they're going to be three stopping, anybody who eats their tyres, you're going to want to come in pretty soon. Um, probably two or three laps. The three stop, the two stoppers though, they're going to have to make their tires last for at least lap 23, 24. So, 23.6 is a third of the way through the race. So I reckon anyone from that, probably lap 21 onwards. Now 21. Yeah, pretty much 21, second fixed up lap 42, you would have to do uh, 29 lap stints in your final set of tyres, but they seem to be, the drivers seem to be doing that and getting away with it, extending their final set just a little bit longer. If they haven't got skills, well, you're going to have to restop it, but 
Yeah, we should be pretty soon. Maybe this lap, we might see a few of the best of skilled drivers wanting to bin their tyres and get some new ones in. Doesn't seem to be just yet. But pit stop should be on the way, folks. So three high down forces. Stuck in a bit of a train. Rossi quite happily in front of it though. Mattel in fourth. He'd love to get on the podium. He really would. He's the highest placed driver in the championship. He's not been on the podium. Three drivers behind him have stepped on the podium this season. So he'd love to get up there. In fact, Harvey, highest placed team. Uh, well, one of only four teams left which haven't had a podium yet. And it's going to be slightly worrying because Nico Hockenberg is close enough to think about moving his turn nine. He is close right up to the towel. If Dell hadn't been quite so excellent on that extra turn ten, then Hockenberg could have been thinking about moving to turn one. He was taking a different line here. Beth got the power earlier but had a massive slide in the process. Anybody want him to pit yet? Jensen Button, there we go, so yes. So Jensen Button is 16th for the Harvey Racing. He already decided to throw these tyres in the bin. And he seems to be the only driver of the bunch needing to do such. So, three stops. Gonna be beginning quite soon. We'll probably see a few more drives in the next couple of laps also starting to throw their tyres away. I said really if, you, if you're gonna two stop you need to push to that lap 23 so you have six more laps on these tyres. Let's see if anyone's actually brave enough to try it. Hulkenberg is looking racy now. Maybe you could tell the tyres are going. Tire management uh, 66 versus 86. Vettel's tyres must be going and Hulkenberg's will be absolutely fine. Oh, but he's had to lift it off in case he wants to run into back better, which he didn't want to. Top 5 all happy to carry on so far. Dixon though, he's going to chuck his in the bin. He's coming in this lap. Stappen also. And Ragunathan. As is happening. So a good bunch more. All in the midfield, all thinking, can we get the undercut to work? The undercut has proven to be very effective, I must say. In most of these rounds, undercutting. Yeah. If you're pitting the same as anybody, undercut them, and you'll get ahead, especially if you undercut them by like a few laps. The new tyre speed is incredible in these cars, so. Only stay out longer than your rivals if you're planning to stop one time less. Or even two times less, but I don't know if it's possible to if these drivers are prepared to one stop at all. Hulkenberg had an awful final corner, we saw it on the curb. Big slide on the exit curb, and Hulkenberg not looking too happy. Sterling Moss is going to pick from the race lead, so lap 19. He's not too stopping. This is definitely a free stop again for Moss. So we'll see if Hockenberg or anybody else here like Heidfeld or Rossi or Mattel decide to two-stop. He could hold Moss up and he'll just have to be more decisive than he was last week when he didn't make a move when it was on. Hamilton in eight, he's got to come in as well. As then I'm Prost is up to 11th and you'd think during the pit window, oh I'm Prost is up to 11th, that's actually his pit window, but no this is pretty much on pace so well done to him. Gurney. No one's also coming in, so, hang on, uh, Dixon, yes, Dixon is the highest placed driver who has pitted so far. Staffan is quite a way behind, his button has jumped by through doing the thing, the Phoenix de Costa is back in the pack, basically against the drivers he was racing. So, Phoenix, well, if he can get away with just one stop in here, it'd be incredible, but I don't think he will. So, Hyper takes the lead as Rossi decides to bail this lap. So Rossi and Vettel coming in together as Hulkenberg is going to stay out. So Hulkenberg obviously once again probably going to try and two-stop it. 
Senna's happy to carry on, Hill's carrying on, but Visser and Pavlovich aren't. Watson burning his tyres up in his final lap on them. Moss exiting the pits in 10. So his undercut's probably going to get him a nice big gap through when he's racing. Hamilton exits the pits. And he's racing Dixon. And Dixon has got ahead of Hamilton. But Hamilton's in the slipstream now. Is he going to make a move on Dixon into turn three? His tyres might be new, but they're not that new. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Hulkenberg now right on Vettel though. There's almost contact. Hulkenberg up the inside of Vettel as he tries to get in the pit. Brilliant move from Hulkenberg. A scary moment for Vettel. That's been losing a lot of time. Heidfeld is ditching these tyres at the end of lap 21. So, he's looking for a long final spin, but Heidfeld could, I think, theoretically two stop from here. Probably won't. Senna and Hill are also coming in. So Hulkenberg, oh, he's almost definitely two stopping now. Looking at that. 22, 22 laps, and it'd be... 27 laps in the final stint, that's doable. You wouldn't want to pick five laps to go unless some crazy, cruel, and ironic happens. So Rossi has now got a second and a half to Battelle behind him. That's worked out quite well. Cross sets as well. Watson as Watson's behind by so the undercut for Jensen Bifner has worked superbly. He's jumped ahead of a lot of these cars, but he was miles behind. Watson being past Button, and Felix da Costa having a go here at Laguna from 16th place. Hyperfield's in the pits. We've got Felix first from Gunnison into the breaking point. And Felix Costa is through. Of course, Felix lost his front wing against Laguna in this corner, so the fact that he's able to get back past shows how much pace he's been missing in the traffic and how much he's got when he's out of it. Moss has got past Heidfeld. Heidfeld's going to exit the pits. Where does he slot well ahead of Rossi? Actually he's a long way ahead of Rossi. I thought the undercut was supposed to be powerful but maybe it's the overcut. Hill has appeared just in front of Dixon so there's no change really between those two. Dixon's got a run here on Hill, up the inside, into the hairpin, it's as if the camera went to the right one, that would be useful. Hill's got the outside line now and he's going to battle Dixon down the straight. But Dixon's got the inside line and he's ahead, Hill's going to have to really tough around the outside, which he's going to do. Hill on the rubbered line gets back ahead of Dixon and stays ahead, but Hamilton is close to them and Senna is a long way ahead. Patel and Rossi have formed a long way away from Heinfeld, who's again quite away behind Moss. Stan Moss does a 109.8 compared to Hulkenberg, who is now going to come in at 23. This is the point when I said. Yeah. This is the point when I said if you're going to come in, this is the time to do it at lap 23. So this is almost just in line with the two stops and we'll do 23 laps, 22 laps and then 24 laps. Absolutely perfect for anybody trying to do a three stop, a two stop even. So 17 seconds is the gap back to Moss at the moment. Seth are going to fall behind them. It's probably going to appear somewhere between Rossi and Vettel when I fell. I mean that's all he's back and forth and he's not exactly lost a load of time while he's doing this. But he just needs to try and avoid getting stuck behind Senna. If he gets stuck behind Senna, almost game over. Senna's pace just hasn't been there and he's not going to overtake him at all. It's going to be how much does this new tyre pace dominate. Moss really takes the lead of the race. Hardfield up into second. Hulk are open, he makes it the pits, I think he's going to make it behind even Patel. Rossi's through comfortably, yeah, Vettel's through as well. 
but Hulkenberg has a massive tire advantage and also the knowledge that he's probably got a pit stop advantage as well over a lot of them. Heidfeld might have pitted late enough that he's going to be on the two stop as well. What won him the race in Virginia? Um, two stop for Heidfeld. We've seen it before. Many races that the two stop is powerful if your drivers can make it survive, but it's not a guaranteed victory. I was shown in the last race that if you're racing it up, you can catch up. So Moss is 110.0. Heinfeld slightly quicker than that. Moss is even quicker. As is the town. I'll go 79 with down a pit stop. And he's now 1.1 seconds behind the town who we overtook just before the pit stops. Senna, Hill, and Dixon all doing pretty much the same lap times. I mean, Heinfeld, they were all in the 109.9s that lot with this uh, like half a tenth down, but still down. Status quo resume. So if we look to Costa, and we have to see how he can push those tires. This on lap 11. So, maybe he needs to try. If he wants the two stop, he's going to have to push these tires for 30 laps till about lap 40, or lap 41, and then try and nurse the tires again for 30 laps. He's going to have no pace towards the end of those stints, or he just go for an easy three stop. And just be out of sequence, try and use tyre advantage when he can, and then block when he can't. Moss sets fastest lap, Heidfeld doesn't, Rossi doesn't, Patel also doesn't. Hulkenberg's still in the 110, so Hulkenberg still hasn't done a lap in the 109s. Either he hasn't got the pace, or he's holding those tyres back like nobody's business. Squeaky on the apex. Sorry, I completely forgot what I was supposed to be doing there. Um, <laughs> commentating on the race. Uh, still. So there's a bit of trading on lap times here, but mostly it's Sterling Moss pulling away at the front. Um, Heidfeld in second, he's pulling away mile from Rossi. He in turn is pulling away from Vettel, and Hulkenberg is sticking with him. Yeah, and I think Hulkenberg's just pacing himself, but he can't pace himself too much because 9 seconds he's the advantage over Moss. And if we assume that Moss is going to lose an extra 25 seconds with another pit stop over oh, Hulkenberg's um, number of pit stops left, that's only going to give Moss 15. Yeah, there's only 15 seconds Moss has got to close up and then um, pull off an overtake and we've seen the passing here is quite easy, it's easier than it was at Silverstone because of the bigger braking points. And also, you know, we saw what happened last week and Moss didn't get through. So we'll just have to see of course. Heidfeld, I think Heidfeld might also be trying to go to the end here. He's only three seconds behind Moss, so Moss is going to have to make up 22 seconds on Heidfeld. Plus having to get past Hulkenberg at the same time. So Moss might be putting away at the front, but this isn't exactly an easy win. 
Uh, the Arabina Villains finally been shuffled back down the pack after his good start. Hackland's up to 17, so he's starting to climb back up after his dismal start. Felix the cost is 16, so if he can get past Buckingham, will become 50. He's again looking racy, but he's looking like he's going to make a pass. I don't know. We'll soon find out. Lovic is you know, beginning his recovery, but 11th isn't much of a recovery when he started in 6th. He got to 13th with only two places gained out of the 7 he lost. Not ideal, but at least he's miles ahead of Verstappen and he's 5 seconds off in 12th place. And this is close to Hamilton, but Hamilton's got that low down force, low drag configuration. Gonna help him down these straights. As you can see, are they closing up in the corners? It's not working elsewhere. Hockenberg has at least finally done a lap in the 109s. That's something, but there's not much going on at the moment, is there? I know, I need to do a bit of this. Do, do, do. It's all a bit strong out so far. Hamilton can't. Oh, this isn't have Logan Hamilton, past Hamilton yet. Him's dropped away from Senna. Half over Tell are just swapping race lap times. Let's run on board with Moss at high speed for a bit. Uh, no one's fallen off yet. Order doesn't seem to have changed either. Ah, Hulkberg has just got past Patel though. So Patel probably had a slow end of the lap somewhere. Hulkberg's catching up. He's in the slipstream. Pulls to the inside. Through turn two, hits the brakes into the turn three hairpin. Hulkenberg makes the move stick. Into turn four, and Hulkenberg is up past Vettel. So that is the handy bit of moving there for Hulkenberg in his battle. Um, in his championship, as really, I think the race was between Hulkenberg, Hulkenberg, and Moss, depending on who pits and when. Let's stay and move around. Moss's lead is now at 4.8 seconds. Harper is now 4.2 ahead of Rossi. He's got 3 seconds down Hulkenberg. So he's going to have to try and use the time to try and get away from Patel. He's really falling back to the man Senna to catch up. So that's what Hulkenberg needs to get through. If Senna had got past, that would have been an absolute disaster. I think Felix da Costa is just making his second pit stop. So that's 34. No, 36 laps. Felix is going to have to make another stop. There's no way they're going to the end of this race. No way, Jose. This is half distance though, so I will not be surprised if... Here we go, so Button is coming in this lap. He makes his stop. Yes, if Felix has pitted just a lap or two before the first of the three stoppers anyway. So, Felix definitely got one more to go, even if he, he might pit a lot later and have a blistering final section though. As Moss has once again pulled a massive gap. He's just stretching his advantage up front. 
Yeah, half of our seven seconds behind, half of our awful couple of laps somewhere. And it's allowed Rossi to catch right up to him. So unless Hyford has now suddenly realised that he needs to save his tyres a lot more. This is where we're currently at. So Hamilton's now got... Well, it's still got this from Pavlovich behind, but Dixon's got out of the way. The staff is coming into the pits and Dixon's had to wait for him, so that's going to hold Dixon up. That's not going to be helpful for the Siggy Pop driver. Staff can get some changes as Hakkinen slides past. Get into his pit box and Staff can go again. The driver's just getting held up by other drivers coming into the pits. Felix de Costa has managed to get ahead of both Hakkinen and McGillerton, but not Staffan, so Felix now needs to use this little bit of time he's got on clear air to try and get ahead and, and make the difference as Hakkinen's having to defend as Jensen Button throws it up the inside at turn 3. Button's got horrible memories of this track, he's led all the way and three laps to go his brakes failed down into this corner turn four so he's gonna have to hope that history doesn't repeat itself or that it doesn't happen to a race to the race leader either i suppose actually if it gets to that point he won't care if the race leader has brake failure and flies off will he hamilton has fallen back behind pavlovich there and this up there Yeah, Hamilton has. Part has happened somewhere. It's not this lap, I'm just... Oh yes, Hamilton's gone wide up at Turn 4. And we're talking about drives going off at Turn 4. Hamilton's just slid wide. Lots of understeer. These tyres perhaps not performing as much as he was hoping. So Pavlovich and Visser have now got through. As Hamilton, he has decided to ditch the tyres at the end of the next lap. Sterling Moss, here we go, lap 39. And Moss decides that these tyres, it's time for them to come in. Time to do some more blistering laps. Seven seconds is lead over Heinfeld. As Regulatum was lapped in the pit lane. So Nick Heinfeld's going to inherit the race lead. Which he does so. Rossi continuing on. Hockenberg now up to third, this Vettel is fourth, and Vettel decides to come in. So last time Ross and Vettel pitted, set to, pitted together, but now Vettel's going to pit a lap earlier than... Or Vettel's pitting and Ross is deciding he's not going to come in together now. This and Pavlovich are together as Moss turns out in ninth. Pavlovich and Lissa are three and a half seconds ahead, so I don't think Moss is going to have to simply catch and pass his teammate because they'll probably get out of the way and pit before that chance comes up. The Moss is now 17 seconds off high foul and 13 off Hulkenberg. This cost is still in 17 with a bunch of runs still to pit home. I don't know how that's going to change. There's Staff and Hamilton. Dixon is now behind Norris and being held up by the chopper driver. Dixon's actually going to send it up the inside as Norris gets ready to turn to the pits this lap. And he uses the last of his tyres to keep ahead of Dixon and had a slide on the, on the inside kerb. That's the camera I've been looking for for ages. Even with a bit more height to it. Going in, what's going there's the tail next thing he's stopped well behind Moss already. This is coming in with Pavlovich's this is Pavlovich's chance to get ahead in the overcut. Still carrying on so far, Senna's still happy, Hoffman still happy, but Rossi is gonna come in. Lap 41, so 30 laps to go. I don't think the tire's gonna last that long. If they're only making them last 20.
Go next, it's the pits, and Norris does uh, cut the cost up to 15. He's in the points at the moment, and he's going to be battling. Who's that? Watson on the pit lane exit. I think Mr. Costa's got the launch. He's got the slipstream. Has he got the moves on Watson? Watson's going to have a tire advantage. I think Mr. Costa can't get a move down into turn four. The rear wing of the Nokia shed. Um, TKF1 and John Watson, and Watson holds on to the cost, so the cost is charging at the moment. But he is up into the points at least. Scott Dixon has lost his front wing somewhere. If he lost that, his nice went into the pits maybe. That's what I'm guessing, but complete disaster there for Scott Dixon. It is. It is, so Norris starts going to the pits and has to break harder. Dixon not expecting it. Runs straight into the back of Norris, so let's hope Chopper had time to find a rear wing to replace with Norris's car. This pit stop. Yes, they did. They did, but Dixon's now had to go an extra lap. It's Button and Hacken side by side through turn six and now turn seven. Hacken round the outside is going to have the inside line for turn eight. Absolute wheel to wheel and stuff between the pair of them. Hacken sweeps ahead through turn nine. Button tries to battle it round the outside, but no. Hacken keeps the position. Dixon makes it in. Felix de Costa now really challenging John Watson, who was having to defend, but he had to lift off, and that was not what he needed. Have Lowe Richard Hill coming into the pits. Heidfeld, Hulkenberg, and Senna are still happy in 1, 2, and 3. Hill gets into the pits. Pavlovich gets into it just before Sterling Moss catches up. Moss does have to break though. Loses a bit of extra time. He didn't need to behind his teammate. But that's the pace he's got over his teammate. He caught that three second gap up in not that long. Moss does a 10.3. Senna decides to come in this lap. As does Heidfeld. this long 28 laps they've got to do on these tyres never mind it um they've only done 22 laps maximum on these tyres so those tyres are going to have to struggle at the end it's half a moment still ahead rossi and if he have to make an extra stop what's happened to rossi was he no i don't see any damage on that car He's stuck in gear. Phantom pit stop for Alexander Rossi. Because he's ahead of Sebastian Mattel at the moment. Well, that's going to hurt him. Missa also needing that Phantom pit stop. Perhaps there's been some faulty fuel or a loose wheel nut on these cars. And yeah, still a Moss in second place. What a surprise, fastest lap. He's 11 seconds now behind Alkenberg. He's, have, he's got tyre advantage and will have some tyre advantage at one point. Hockenberg is carrying on. If he can make it to lap 47 or lap 48, that's kind of the perfect time. End of lap 47 is the perfect time to make a proper two stop work. Proper two thirds of the race. The Hulkenberg's not got long to make that distance. Moss has still got a stop to go, so... Once again, it seems to be a battle between the pair of them for the win, just being one less pit stop between them. Senna has jumped Sebastian Vettel. That is a surprise. Senna's pace has obviously been good, and not being able to be overtaken has been pretty useful. This helps that Rossi's had to make an extra pit stop for some reason, but it had to go to Phil Hill, I think, to stick. Pavlovich defends from Hamilton and is up into 7th, so Pavlovich's recovery job is going pretty good right now. Verstappen now 9th, owing to his early pit stop. Adam Prost up into 10th, that's incredible I must say. Well, I will say that Patel and Senna are looking super close here. 
Kellen had to pace all through the race, Senna's got the speed down the straight. Which is why the tell miles ahead of Senna. Looking at how far ahead Hulkenberg and Moss are. Moss has got two lapped cars he needs to get past, but both went behind Hulkenberg in the pits. Those are going to be crucial. How much are they going to slow Moss down as he catches up to Hulkenberg? And where are they going to drop back after pit stops? The Hulkenberg's got a 28 second head of Senna, but that little squabble, if he, when he makes his stop, which isn't in yet, he drops in that battle with Senna and Vettel or gets overtaken by Senna, that's almost game over for him. He can stay ahead and try and pull away on his new tyres, he'll be fine. Um, so Hulkenberg needs to try and make sure he's ahead of Senna, so if he's currently praying that Patel starts to attack Senna and slows them both down and maybe gets Phil Hill involved. If that happens, Hulkenberg can drop in here, ahead him and have clean air. And hopefully for his sake not have to defend from the Falcon. He's gonna be epic down the straights. So there's your alternator Nico. Moss, when he makes the stop, is probably gonna appear behind them again. And it's gonna depend whether Senna and Hardbug can nurse those tires to the end of the race. So him and Patel will probably disappear quite quickly. Um There is some intrigue left in this race, just about. Maybe because we don't know who's going to win. I'm just going to move it forward a bit, see if I can get some sharks they can move. And we're still going. Felix da Costa has just made a move on John Watson, finally, up into 12. So there we go. So Nico Hulkenberg finally on lap, as you said, on lap 47. Actually, the end of lap 48. Perfect time for a pit stop. So this is the crucial moment. Do you see Hulkenberg at the end of the pit lane? Is Senna going to be able to get past Hulkenberg into turn 3? So second is the gap. I think Hulkenberg may have timed this absolutely perfectly. And unless Senna can get past into turn 4 this lap, Hulkenberg's new tyres should allow him to disappear off into the distance in his first few laps. because he's either got better tyre life or he's got a pit stop on Senna so Hulkenberg just needs to eke the tyres up into temperature and then disappear in this little set so 6 tenths in the end here Senna's now having to worry about the tail catching up again it's 8 tenths with the left handers out the final two corners, this is where it's going to matter for Hulkenberg. Can he pull up far enough ahead of Senna that Senna's got no chance of slipstreaming past? A 109.9 is what Senna's just done. That's quicker than... It's only just... slower than Hulkenberg's fastest ever lap. That's got to be worrying for Hulkenberg. In fact, Senna is really close. Hulkenberg and Hamilton are right together again. Hulkenberg needs to use that tie grip in the corner and in the braking zones especially. 16 seconds is the gap to Sterling Moss. Hulkenberg and Hamilton swapping positions again. Hulkenberg survives another lap. So he tells Formula 1 and Phil Hill is getting close to a challenge. Hamilton though is now ahead of Pavlovich. Moss has fallen back into 11th after that extra pit stop and Felix the Costa up into 12th, so impressive recovery job. As now it's Landon Norris having to defend, or sorry, get away from Sterling Moss, that's going to lose Moss some time. Highford 109.8. <coughs> Harkenbo, what's his lap time like? 10.0. It's quicker than Senna, but not by much. Hulkenberg's having to be too defensive here, and this might cost him his back for the win. He's just going to have to be lucky that so far there's no one that's going to be pitching and appearing in front of him. 
Oh, well, we don't know yet. Um, there's only more back marks, but there's no back markers that he's having to pass at the moment. And they're all in the way of Sterling Moss. He's gone past Lando Norris. Scott Dixon is probably about six, seven seconds up ahead. Go through the pack again. So lap 52, Sterling Moss leaves the race. He's definitely got to stop again. Those tyres not looking too great. Nick Heidfeld is second up two places. He's potentially two stopping, likely three stopping. We'll see how that goes, but his pace at the end of the race is going to be quite disastrous, I think. Harkenberg up there, he's done the perfect two stop. Hasn't got the pace to back it up. He's not really had the lap time, but he's managed to fend off Senna for the moment up two places. Senna up five places. He's been a bit of a star at this race. Couldn't quite get past Hulkenberg, but he's doing a great job up in fourth, up five from ninth. The tail's down two, but he's in fifth, doing what he can do. And I think on the back, Pavlovich has pulled off. There's a little flag, and it's Lewis Pavlovich. Through turn one, has anything blown up or has it just died on him? No, he, he's pulled it off the track quite quickly. Yeah, yeah, the electrics have died on it completely. Look, he's just the car's gone straight into anti stall and he's out. So, Vince Pavlovich dropping back down the pack. So, the Tell and Fifth, Phil Hill up into sixth. Bit of a topsy turvy race so far. Lewis Hamilton, he's now 7th up 3 places, and now clear without Pavlovich to battle. The staff up into 8th, up 7 places, that's an exceptional bit of driving from him. Alan Pross is even more exceptional, up 11 places into 9th in the back of the group from a driver who's been pretty terrible all season, I must be said. Um, if it weren't for the car being so OP in Monza, he would definitely almost be, I know it actually he would be lost the championship, but he's not had the pace. Rossi down from the front row into 10th, not what you'd expect, but you know, he'll have to do a recovery job here, and this, if he can nurse these tyres to the end, he'll have to do. Felix Da Costa lost his front wing early, but his battle is back into 11th, up three places from his grid slot. It's John Watson now in 12th, back where he started, it's Hackman, dropped to the back at the end of the first lap, he's up in 13th, so recovery drive, but not recovery from the grid. Button now 14th, and further back again as this is other Phantom Pit Stopper from 15th. Going up to 16th, we're doing the 17th, Dixon down to 18th, having lost his front wing on the back of Lando Norris. Talking to Norris, he was in 19th, Pavlovich. The one retiring car. So Senna hasn't left Hulkenberg alone, and down the straight, Hulkenberg is getting dangerously close to being overtaken as I think with another car off it might be Jensen Button it is Button the other driver I, the yard curse Button when I talked about the last thing that happened to him but something else has gone wrong he was also pulled off down the back straight the inside of turn two oh big puff of engine smoke from the back of that Harvey unfortunately two cars down but it's going up into the points, that's what he'd like to see. Patel now has fallen behind Phil Hill. When did that happen? Phil Hill bringing Excelsior into the top five, that's what he'd like to see. Not the two manager would love, especially, so. Turn two and three wasn't very good for Harvey that lap, as Patel loses a position and Button blows up into it. It's a good move from Phil Hill. Gets off position. Hulkenberg is now 17 seconds off Moss. He needs to hope Senna's going to the end if he's got a hope in hell of this race. Because that's the only thing that's going to hold Moss up, is him getting stuck behind Senna for a while. And the problem is if he goes to the end, Hardfoot will probably go to the end. And that won't suit Hulkenberg either. one. I 
think we'll just do another bit of zipping forwards because we're all a bit spread out unfortunately again. Anyone changing on the left? Not really, Hulkenberg is catching Moss a tiny bit, that's something to know. I think we're waiting for Phoenix the Cost has now got past Alexander Rossi. That is a surprise, so this, this little battle here is shaping up pretty good. I think we're all going to have to stop again this lot. Um, I think Mr. Costa will be the first of this lot to come in if he is coming in, of course. I, I reckon he will have to. These cars aren't going to last much longer than this. And it stays where the eye's gone past Prost and all of this. There we go, so Mika Hackman is going to come in at the end of this lap. Johnny Moss still happy, he's got 11 laps to go on these tyres, can he make them light? To catch up to Scott Dix put a lap on him, that's going to slow him down a bit. Mervi Ragunathan has exited the pits, behind Hulkenberg and ahead of Senna, that is going to relieve the pressure on Hulkenberg attack. That's exactly what he needed, how is going to be this cost coming in this lap? As Verstappen and Hackner have made their stops, their final stops of the race. Gunnarsson finally starting to lift off, but Senna's not able to get through. Gunnarsson is just throwing so much lap time away from Senna, he's losing time in the place he's losing a lot of time anyway. It's nearly chops him off there. He keeps ahead of Patel for the moment. And that was not ideal in any way. Moss is having to come in. There's a load of cars next to the pits right next to him. Well, he's can't get by Dixon either, and he's trying to defend almost from Verstappen who's got the brand new tyres and he's trying to make his own race. So it's not smooth sailing here for Moss. As I said, the pit stop window is when it was going to disrupt the leaders and their kind of rhythm as they were in. Highfield's still happy to carry on. It's probably about two more laps and then, in it, then everybody will have made their stop who's coming in. Hulkenberg quite happy, he's definitely carrying on. Senna, Kevin Vettel happy so far. Prost and Rossi is Watson's going to come in this lap. How to make this stop as if he needs to cost her. Gunny's going to get through past the pair of them. Dixon flies into his last stop. Here we go, so Moss comes in. Now is Dixon going to be a disruptor that Moss does not need? Depends where Dixon stops. Dixon stops ahead of Moss. So we could almost see Dick's next in the pits and holding Moss up on the exit, which would not help Sterling at all. He's got through. Norris is coming in. Verstappen here, challenging Felix de Costa. Felix de Costa comes out the pits and stays ahead of Verstappen. It's a great move from Felix de Costa. Absolute recovery drive and a half here. There we go. So Moss has exited behind Senna and behind Hulkenberg, and obviously behind a hide belt. Phil Hill is right his tail and he's got Dixon and Ragunathan ahead of him with blue flags. And we'll see how difficult Ragunathan was to get past. It's five seconds, but two lapped cars and potentially one guy who's not pitting again to catch up to Hulkenberg. And that's what he's mentioning Eidfeld, who's even further ahead and potentially not stopping. I reckon this is probably the last time, the last lap we'll see. If, Hulk, if Heidfeld flicks up his pit window warning at the end of this lap he'll be coming in if he doesn't i reckon he's going to the end i would have to see if those tires can last long enough so here's the tense moment heidfeld into turn one i think he might be going to the end so hockenberg's got seven seconds to try and catch up to him if he wants to win this race but 10.2 isn't going to be enough senna's dropping back though Moss is a terrible lap, or out lap even, as Vettel makes his stop. Cross now into the same from Rossi, crossed seventh place. This is a spectacular drive from the Falcon driver, and again, I don't know if he's stopping again. Rossi should have made his final stop, he'll try and get past Cross when he can. It's crossed out to sixth from last on the grid, that's, that's special driving. It really is. 
probably not the move for longer if Ross can just send out the inside in this breaking point. Thinks about it. Ross defends well enough to keep ahead. Staffan has to get back past Felix da Costa. Now challenging. Oh, that's a great exit. Great exit from the Portuguese. He's going to challenge the Dutchman. Staffan's going to defend the inside and he squeezes at a really awkward moment on the way into turn two. Felix has to stay behind Staffan. Someone must set some new fastest lap. And hard belt isn't coming in. Now it's Hulkenberg. Now the Senna. Moss obviously not, but he's set fastest lap and then had to put a lap on the beam of him. But he's on a mission. Ah, Dan Gurney has appeared out of the pits. He's going to be having to defend. Felix da Costa has now got past Verstappen. Obviously the point I turned away was the point that it happened. Obviously not deterred by being squeezed at turn two. Felix just sends it on the brakes. On the inside of Verstappen gets his nose in. Gets the move done. Doesn't give him any space. Felix coughs up to 11th place. Ross is still trying to attack Alain Prost. He's got about eight laps to make these tyres get to the end and to make this move. Down the back straight we go. Into turn four and Ross is going to send it like we've just seen Felix da Costa do. Got the better brakes, but he's not got the braveness. This is a stick with it. Moss now, 1.2 seconds behind Senna. He's catching up. Senna's tyres looking a bit overdone. That's going to be anything that Moss has got to play with because he's not got speed down the straights. We know this. Can he make a move past Senna? Then can he catch up to Hulkenberg? Hulkenberg, of course, championship leader, but as it stands, Heidfeld will get past Hulkenberg. Moss actually joined second because of the pole position. Uh, extra point, I forgot about that when I was talking about him in the beginning of the race. Yes, as it is, Moss is falling away as Heidfeld will take the championship lead back. Hulkenberg will drop down in second, and Moss will have to stay third. Cross Rossi and Vettel right with each other now. Vettel close to Rossi, Rossi close to Frost. Sticking as they are for the moment. And from Moss, right behind Senna. Lap 66, five laps to go. Moss has got to get this move done quickly if he wants any chance to catch up to Hulkenberg. Heidfeld and Senna not coming in. Definitely two stopping now. They're going to the end on these tyres, no matter how dead they might be. Moss can't make the move yet. Right on board with the rear winger Senna. Senna's got that straight line speed. It's enough at the moment. It's what's keeping Prost ahead as well. As Moss closes right up on the brakes. Ross has had to lift out in the battle against Alan Prost in the other car. Moss has got past Senna, of course, I knew as soon as I turned away, the overtake was going to happen. There's another battle that was also close. What's happened here? Oh, he's just, he's just driven right past Senna. Senna's tyres are gone. He's not good in the middle sector. And Moss has just gone, I'm just going to go past you. I don't care what you say. Felix da Costa's ex fastest lap in 11th place as he's really pulled away from Verstappen there. Vettel has got past Rossi. So Rossi really attacked Prost into turn one but couldn't get the move done. He's then lost a load of momentum, caught it back in the slipstream. But Vettel's thought, screw you, I'm just going to dive up the inside, get to the apex. And that is a move done. Very simple, and can Vettel now be the one who gets past Frost? Certainly has the pace. 
Frost goes a bit wide and Vettel does the same thing. So Falcon losing two places on the same lap in the same unconventional corner. Vettel gets two on his new tyres. Here he's defending here from Scott Dix, who's been lapped. And Senna is now just falling away from Moss. Hockenberg's got two and a half seconds back to Sterling Moss. But he's never shown any kind of race pace and he's barely dipping into the 109s. So Moss should close this up quickly. But will he play championship or will he send it? Who knows, but he's not catching high, but eight seconds in four laps, no. That's not going to happen. Less than cool and ironic have to die, but I'm not going to commentate his curse. Thank you very much. As Antonio finishes the costume 11, sets another new fastest lap. There's so obviously tyres that can last a long time in clear air. Give a lot of pace. And I don't take a defence, so haven't, the staff haven't got past him. And then the cost of getting back past. There you go, Moss is now in the 108s. <laughs> Moss is not playing around, he means business. Hockenberg just one and a half seconds up. So that Frost down to independent from Rossi, especially as Vettel has just disappeared into the distance. Actually, how the pace he has. Rossi really having to be so cautious in this final corners because he'll run into the back of Frost. I mean, if that breaking point for the final quarter is just a bit quick. I'm sure Rossi would have dived there. And again, trying to turn one, but that's not the place to make the move. I mean, it is because you can't do it in the next corners because of drag and everything. Three laps to go. When he crosses the line. Sterling Moss has got less than a second to make a Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg does a 110 and Moss is a 109.2, so that's 8 tenths a lap, he's quicker. He doesn't have a straight line speed advantage, he's just got the tyre advantage. Right, Hulkenberg, the one up front, and he's got the high ground. He can defend as much as he likes, and he's the one who managed to make his tyres last longer. And they're both sat here going, well, Heidfeld's running away with this up front. Because we... I didn't have the pace, and you didn't have the tyre advantage. Or you couldn't let your tyres last long enough, and all this is meant that Heidfeld's going to win this. That's what they're saying to each other. Moss isn't going to try his signature move into turn 6, then. There's Watson and Verstappen here, side by side, out the final corner, down the start straight. Who's going to break latest and so on? Who's going to have the speed? Who's going to get the air papers? The staff on the outside. Who takes the place? Keeps it. Watson's just going to have to sit there and accept that it wasn't going to be. Hulkenberg now. Two laps to go. This is when Moss caught him up at Silverstone. And Moss didn't make the move. That was for the race win. This is for second. It's just going to be massive in the championship. There's this one point separating the three of them in the top three of this race as well. Moss, is he going to send it into the hairpin? Not this lap. But one more opportunity into that corner if he doesn't make the move into turn 4 or turn 6 or turn 7 or 9 or 10. This looks good for Moss though. Is he going to think about it on the brakes? No. He's going to change it out for one more lap. Hulkenberg gets the exit. He's on the marbles. He's a bit wide. Moss has got a much tighter line. He closes right up on Hockberg, but now into the middle sector where the tyre advantage is going to give Moss just that little bit extra speed. Can he close up? Or will it be once again the last lap disappointment for Moss? All the advantage, but none of the track position. None of the balls to send it. Half a second between them. We start the final lap. Hulkenberg's taking defensive line, they've both got a good exit. Moss has obviously got better with the new tyres, and now he's in the slipstream. This could be it. Which way is Hulkenberg going to go? Is Moss going to send it up the inside into turn three? No, he's not. He's probably got two more chances to make this move happen. 
then next it like that, it's a bit wobbly, it's not perfect, it's not ideal. I'm just gaining back. Gaining the position back. Are we going to throw it up the inside and tap or Hulkenberg slides wide? This is probably Moss's best chance. Get up the inside in six, like he did to Senna. But Hulkenberg's wise to that. Doesn't leave enough room. Unless Moss can do something magic through the final two corners. <coughs> probably not going to be it. Moss, thinking about moving to nine. Not going to happen. And Nick Heifeld is going to cross the line to win the Austrian Grand Prix. Hulkenberg once again holds off Sterling Moss. Three stop. It's not worth it. Hulkenberg takes second. Moss, fastest driver on track, ends up third. Senna takes a spectacular fourth place. Head of Phil Hill. Sebastian Vettel in sixth place. He's a long way off Hill. But it'll have to do. He's pulled miles ahead of Prost, who's defended valiantly. Alexander Rossi last on the grid to finish seventh. Alan Prost, an incredible drive, definitely. Rossi takes eighth. Visser up into ninth. Head of Lewis Hamilton in tenth place. Antonio Felix Costa takes the fastest lap. Ending up in, oh no he doesn't, Moss did, but ends up 11th. Watson wins this little battle, gets ahead of Hakkinen, with Verstappen in 14th, and Dan Gurney, first of the lap, last of the drives in the points. He gets a point, his third points finish of the season, is still last of the championship, but it's better than nothing. Dixon takes 16th, Raguna in 17th, and Norris in 18th in last place. Button and Pavlovic, the only retiree. Well, that was the Austrian Grand Prix. High phone is a nice little drifty slide into the pit box. It's been a wonderful race. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, go to the YouTube link and smash a like on it. Subscribe if you're new. Comment down below on what you thought of the race. And if you want to join the series, follow the link in the description for the race part of the I hope you've enjoyed this excellent race. And I will see you next time for a brand new event the Polish Grand Prix. Goodbye.